Let's talk about the business. You've earlier been quoted saying that uh, revenues of the company can almost double in the next five years. Currently, it's about 9,300, 9,400 crores. How do you plan to double it? What are the opportunities? What are the challenges? So midterm, the opportunities is the US market for us. Uh, we have a healthy list of ANDAs that have been filed and coming up for approval. I think we have a very decent portfolio uh, where we can see a lot of revenue getting generated in the midterm. Uh, so that's where is large part of the revenue growth is going to come from. Uh, beyond that, our India business is a very well established business. Uh, we hope that this business will continue to grow at 14 to 15 percent and it's a sizable business close to 35 percent of our revenues come from India. So these two businesses will definitely add the significant chunk of uh, value that has to be added in terms of doubling our revenue. And then our other businesses which are on a uh, high growth trajectory like the emerging markets business which is very small today but we hope in the next five years will significantly scale up. So beyond 2022 the EM market business becomes that third big pillar for growth for the organization beyond the US and India. And also our allied businesses like the animal health business and the FMCG, the wellness business has a lot of potential. They are uh, highly profitable businesses in their sector. Uh, but the scale is needed and we are looking to see how we are able to scale those up. So I do feel some of these businesses will add uh, in terms of growth beyond uh, certain uh, 2020 numbers. Also the two portfolios that we are working on which is biologics and vaccines which today do not contribute significantly to the revenue but post 2020 they will have a significant growth driver for the organization. So let's you know break this answer into uh, some of uh, in a lot of parts and let's start with the US market. So in the last 10 years you have of course seen new launches in the US market and at the same time you've seen pricing which went up. How have the dynamics changed now? Will now as next growth come in from new launches and volume growth rather than pricing? Um, so we would see the growth coming in from new launches for us. Uh, we have 54 approvals as of now. Uh, we, we have still a lot of pending ANDAs with the FDA. We are able to file 40 to 50 ANDAs uh, with the US FDA. So we, our new portfolio will drive significant growth for us. Also this portfolio is more complex in nature, uh, which will mean that uh, the competitive scenarios will be lower not le less but lower on terms of what we do today. But we are still seeing uh, uh, expansion of volumes on our current business which is the old products that be the legacy products that we have. And that is because our supply capabilities are very good. Uh, with our US customers we have one of the best supply track records with them and that allows us to gain a lot of traction in terms of gaining existing volumes and also growing on existing volumes. So it will be a mix of both but a large value will be created with the newer portfolio. Right. You know, just the new US FDA chairman has come and he's spoken about more approvals, more approvals in the complex, help from US FDA for companies. Is that a very big opportunity for Indian pharma? See, complex drugs, you know, we are seeing a lot of guidance is coming out, which is very important because there was lack of guidances on many of the products. And now with the clarity in terms of guidances that are coming out with the US FDA, I think it is definitely going to help companies to be able to develop uh, more complex products and the path has been set in terms of the FDA's expectations. So that is there's a good step taken by the US FDA which will help uh, more complex generics to be developed uh, and that will obviously mean we can be able to file these products and launch these products. Right. So till now it was a lot about generics, R&D spends were not particularly very high but when you have to change, you mentioned about few theories that you're, few therapies that you're working on. So when you change, how do R&D expenses change at least in the initial few years? See, for us, we've been doing all of this. So, you know, we have in the last couple of years have a track record of filing 40 ANDAs. It's a mix of complex products. So though that is not going to significantly change. Uh, we have uh, been developing couple of NCs. Uh, now they've reached phase two trials and this we've been doing for the last couple of years. So it's obviously the R&D expenses are ongoing on that. Uh, we are able to do about two clinical trials on biologics and we've been able to commercialize two every year. Uh, vaccines, we have nine approvals and 18 under pipeline. So all this work and all the R&D expenses has been spent. So I think as the output remains the similar, we will need to spend similar amount of money. And with the revenue growth that we expect, we should be able to manage our R&D expenses around seven to eight percent. Large part of this, which we are able to do, is because we are able to do a lot of we have a lot of capabilities built within. It took us a long time to do that, but now we are able to do a lot of things in-house, which means I am able to manage time and I am able to manage cost more efficiently. Right. Uh, but, uh, you know, can you just tell us that for any of the biosimilars or any of the complex drugs, how is it different from a generic, uh, you know, launch that you were earlier looking? Can the risk return profile be completely different? It is. Um, 
see it's one is it has requires higher capital investment on in the upfront part of it and significantly more uh, also the technology is far different than doing a oral solid so both uh, technology in terms of what we need to import in terms of equipments and machinery but also the ta talent that we need to build inside so this has taken a considerable amount of time in order for us to be able to develop talent